While there are times when words cannot express, cannot do justice. And that's the case at a ceremony in southern Poland today. 75 years ago, on January 27, 1945, the Soviet Red Army liberated the sick and starving survivors of Auschwitz. The scale and the horror of what the Nazis did was and is unimaginable. Today, there were prayers and tears and a warning that the evil that led to the Holocaust still lurks. Redmond Shannon reports. The pain is as clear today as it was 75 years ago. More than 200 survivors made the trip back to Auschwitz, all wearing blue and white striped scarves and hats, just like the prisoner uniforms at the most deadly of all the Nazi death camps, a place where 1.1 million people were murdered, most of them Jews. Auschwitz. Auschwitz didn't just fall from the sky, Marian Tursky told fellow survivors and world leaders. By that he meant there had been a slow creep of anti-Semitism across Europe leading up to the Holocaust. When European Jews begged the world for a safe harbor, somewhere to go, the entire world turned its back on them. World Congress of Jews President Ronald Lauder says open hostility toward Jews has returned in a way he never could have imagined. In 2020, we hear the same lies the Nazis used so effectively in their propaganda. Jews control everything. We hear this madness online, in the media, and even within democratic governments. Among the government leaders present was Hungary's Viktor Orban. He has referred to expat Jewish billionaire George Soros as dishonest and crafty, tropes used against Jews for generations. Countries across Europe have seen marked increases in anti-Semitic crimes in recent years. One Jewish Canadian living in Germany says he no longer wears his kippah skullcap in public. It just doesn't feel as anywhere near as comfortable as safe being Jewish in Berlin as it did when I came in 2017. Aaron Solomon says since the deadly synagogue attack in Germany last fall, he's noticed more security near Jewish landmarks. There's this old Jewish saying that you always need to have that suitcase packed, and we always physically have that suitcase packed here in Germany. As their numbers dwindle, these survivors fear Europe's collective memory of the Holocaust is fading too. Redmond Shannon, Global News, London. They are the last living witnesses to the horrors of the Holocaust. And at Auschwitz today, on the 75th anniversary, the Nazi death camp was liberated. The focus was on the survivors. This may be the last time so many gather in one place. Many who live in Canada, as well as their descendants, are trying to keep their stories alive. Abigail Beeman looks at what's being done and why it's so important. I appeared naked in front of this Dr. Mengele. Richard Lowy's father, Leo, survived Auschwitz. 15-year-old Leo was a twin, experimented on daily by the infamous Dr. Mengele, known as the Angel of Death. Leo lived until 2002. I was asked to present my dad's story called Leo's Journey. Now, on the 75th anniversary of the death camp's liberation, Richard released a new film online where he narrates his father's experience, Leo's Journey, in my father's words. These survivors came up and they started hugging me and thanking me and appreciating the fact that they have the feeling that the story will continue after they're gone. It's already being offered as a resource for teachers in British Columbia and Richard plans to take his father's story around the world. Even though I'm old, I am one of the youngest survivors. Survivors who are still able to share their stories directly say educating the next generation is paramount. The youth that we speak to today is the last generation who will actually meet a person who survived. Especially as Canada and the world face an increase in anti-Semitism. The desire to recognize that these signs are around us everywhere and that we cannot allow history to repeat itself. As long as I am able to, I am committed to do that because I think it's absolutely vitally important that people should understand and listen to witnesses. Out of 150 people in his extended family, Pinchas Guter was one of just five to survive the Holocaust. I lost my parents and my twin sister. 
He was the first survivor to take part in an interactive project by the USC Shoah Foundation, answering hundreds and hundreds of questions so visitors can virtually speak with him close to a real conversation. The most important things that I, that, that is very close to my heart, is to educate the young people. On Holocaust Remembrance Day, he's both thankful and sad. There's a complex mix of emotions. We call it liberation, but Holocaust survivors were never actually liberated uh, because you live with the Holocaust inside you all the time. Doing all he can to make the phrase never again a reality. Abigail Beeman, Global News, Ottawa.